morning to our viewers and our listeners, whether you're joining us on radio, on TV, or online. We continue our extensive coverage now of the lead-up to the general elections, the 15th uh, since universal adult suffrage in 1951. We talked this morning with the Antigua Barbuda True Labour Party. What does the party stand for? What is its platform? What is its message to voters? It has nominated two candidates for the upcoming general elections, and we speak with both of those candidates who happen to be high-ranking members of the party. We're talking about Charlene Warner Samuel. She's the leader of the Antigua Barbuda True Labour Party and also the chairman of the party, Veerbird III. It's my pleasure to welcome both to our discussion this morning. Very good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Indeed. Let me start with uh, Mrs. Warner Samuel. What does the True Labour Party stand for? Antigua Barbuda True Labour Party. Well, we believe in democracy and we believe in protecting our heritage. And that is why our motto is defending our democracy, protecting our heritage. We believe that too long have we been suffering and people have been just pushing our culture aside. Everybody do what they feel like doing. The laws protect the politicians so that when they get into office, depending on how, how long and how, how um, powerful they are, how many candidates they have, then they can make laws, they can change laws, and there's basically nothing we can do about it. There is no conscience in the parliament, and that is what we hope to become, the conscience of the parliament. Okay, well, we, you have two candidates, yourself and Mr. Uh, Verber III. Uh, I mean, even if you were to win both your seats, you would have only two. You, I mean, how would then, what would then happen after it that? You couldn't the, have a majority sorry. in parliament. No, you would not have a majority, and we realize that. So our emphasis at this point in time is representation, because there's no representation for our people. You only call the people together when you want them to do something that suits you. I grew up in an era when meetings were held regularly. People could voice their opinion. Any project that was being done in your, your part of your country, there would be a meeting to explain to you what was happening. Questions were asked and that type of thing. Now that we can read, we're treated like dogs. And so there's no representation at all. And we are asking people to seek, first of all, representation from their constituencies because you have no representation in the parliament at the moment. Mm. So, you, so you will be offering representation in two constituencies. You are going for St. Peter, Mr. Weber III going for St. John's Rural South. What about the other 15 constituencies? Well, the thing is, you can only vote once, and you can only vote for a representative. You can't vote for a government. Now, all the parties are saying to us, try and get a government in power that can handle things. But we know that we have all seen both the UPP and the Labour Party go in, and they've done very little for the constituents. We have done a lot in Paran without the help of the present um, representative because he's not representing anybody. Okay? I know of the time when we in Param came together when the children passed the exams, whether it be junior five exam or um, secondary school exam, whatever, and the Param Improvement Cooperative got help from the business community and other persons, and so we were able to do a lot within our constituency. Since we have had this particular gentleman, nothing has been done in Parham. And even before that, Parham was just taken for granted by all of the, 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 the people who went there, because as far as they're concerned, if we put a dog in a red shirt, you'll win the seat. And we have heard it. And so nobody really cares about what's happening in St. Peter, in, in um, Donut Painters, the roads are awful but specific roads are being built. Yes. Let me get to Weber the third on this. Um, Mr. Word, yes. the Tiki Barbada True Labour Party, again, let me ask you the same question I asked uh, Mrs. Warner Samuel earlier. What is it, the party, what's the platform, mission, well, vision? I just wanted to correct you. The electoral committee put out a notice. The writ of election says, notice that in the constituency of St. John's Rural South, there will be an election to elect a representative to the lower house of parliament. You started off by talking about forming government. The whole process is about electing a representative for the people of that constituency. What you are saying is something that the two major parties want to tell the public in order to strengthen them in parliament so that they can form government. But the exercise on the 21st is about representation. Who is going to represent that constituency? That is the first thing in the jump off. And if people elect the best of the candidates to that constituency, which we believe is Charlene Warner Samuel and Weirbird III, we will do what we have to do after that. But in regards to forming government, that is a whole other concept that these 
two major political parties get into the electorate's head and confuses them because after they quote unquote form government, the representative goes out the window and they don't see them for another five years. So we're not into that forming government mentality. We're into providing you representation because there are a lot of ills in St. Peter and rural South constituency where they never get addressed. They never address the sexual assault that goes on on the Golden Grove Community Center. They never address the issue that there is filth in the Golden Grove Community Center, which I had to call CBH, and they said that they're going to actually clean the place. There's human feces all over this project that the government was supposed to have built. But where's the representative? He is over public works, and I even carbon copy him the letter, but there's no representation. So I think the electorate needs to realize on the 21st of March, it is a process to elect a representative. You go on and start to play the match about you have to get to nine, and if you get nine, you form government, you may form government. But for another five years, you will be pushed to the back of the bus only when another election comes around. All right, fair okay? enough. So, so yes, oh. I mean, um, and nobody questions whether or not uh, people will be voting in their individual 17 constituencies, respective constituencies for a representative first. Right. And then, of course, that is going to become a vehicle through which uh, governments are formed. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but, but first, the fundamental process, of course, voting in your individual constituencies. But let me come back to the question I asked earlier, which is okay. what is the platform? It's pretty much the same question. What is the platform? What is the mission? of the uh, Antigua Barbuda True Labour Party? What does it want to achieve if you well, both of you were to win? It's the same thing. We want to, to provide representation for these constituencies. There is no representation. We have, uh, in St. John's Rural South, the representative is the Minister of Public Works. If you go through that constituency from north to south, starting in Radio Range and ending at Creekside, there is no government building, there is no community centre, there is no health centre, there is no hurricane shelter. We had two category storms in September. And you know where they tell people to go to in St. John's Road South? To Golden Grove Primary School. That building is over 70 years old. That is a structure where category one, category two, hurricane, that's fine. Category four and five, where are you going? That's a dead trap. They're not even discussing what could happen with people losing life and limb. And it has not been discussed since September. That is what we are saying. Where is the representation? He is the over public works. Has he since then talked about building any further hurricane shelters? Have they discussed about how are they going to provide for people if that storm that happened in September had come further south? It wouldn't have been 1,600 people like in Barbuda without houses and needed to be evacuated. In Antigua, it would be 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. And no political party or any representative in Antigua but us are discussing this tragedy that could happen because hurricane season starts in three months. Yes. Uh, well, of course, uh, you're talking about uh, the Minister for Public Works, and that is uh, Eustace Lake. Yeah, but, he's uh, a representative. Fear, yes. He was sick. And, and he's he was, always uh, been sick. That is another issue. Because the parties, they say they can put a dog in there and they will vote for them. Eustace Tikule came home in Antigua to contest the 2009 election, and he was a sick man already. He had a colostomy bag on his waist when he was on the platform. That okay, is the all reality. All right, all right. But, but what I'm saying yes. is that you elected it. You did not check and find out and question who you were electing. You would have erected a, a dog. And now you got Tikule, and now you're saying, excuse, he can't do anything for the last eight and a half years. He was sick. Should you put a sick person in, in, in Parliament? No. Sickness is for all of us. But, uh, but, but to since be, but you're born there, it Mr. shows. Bird. It shows. The representation shows. All right. But to be fair, Mr. Bird, democracy yeah, I'm is I'm always fair. But I'm to be, always to, fair. To be fair, the democracy is about uh, the people, the majority of the people voted for him, um, notwithstanding uh, whether he was sick But that's not. obvious. That's, right. That's, that's, that's democracy. So, and and the, in the last few months that you mentioned in September, he mm. was he was, he was not in physically in the country, actually, he was he was sick. He was in and out. Even treatment. when he is physically in the country, mm. he has not represented the people of that All constituency. Right. He has been sick from the day he got into office. That is what I'm telling you, and what the electorate need to pay attention to when they are electing a representative. People. Okay, let, let me get to uh, what exactly you would do in your individual constituency, starting with uh, Mrs. Warner Samuel. If you are to win in St. Peter on the 21st of March, what would be your first course of action? first course of action would be to form a constituency development council. I said that in 2004 when I ran independently. A constituency development council would take representatives from the different areas, Fidges Creek, Painters, Lightfoot, and the works. 
and come together as an NGO, we can then work hard. We can get help, we can get grants, we can get loans. Well, we would try and avoid a loan, but we can get grants. Just yesterday, I heard Diane Black Lane speaking about how much money has been allotted to Antigua, and NGOs could get grants to fix places in their community. Now, Parham is a town, one of the first towns, actually the first town, and Parham looks like a ghost town at this time. Nothing has been done in Parham. There was even a building when I was growing up called the Union Hall. That has bro been broken down, and nobody has sought to fix it up. The police headquarters, they have put a new building, but the old one is still there looking so awful. You go up street, you have the, the rectory, which is an Anglican building. Again, the same problem. You go into piers, the same thing is happening in piers. Nobody is representing the people. You go down to painters, you go to um, gun trucks, Lightfoot, and they're showing you roads that some can't even pass. You, even right now, at the, the place where you, you license your cars, you pay money there, how much money goes through. And if you drive on that road, it is so bad. Now, what we are saying is that we cannot accept this to be the norm. What representatives have been doing, they will say to us, well, my party did not win, so I could not do anything for you. Or my party won, but they don't like me, so I didn't get a chance to do this or do that. I'm saying we can come together as a people, one constituency, and we can work. In Parliament, we will be the conscience of the Parliament. And I recall when you ALP won some years ago, VC Bird said that the young people would then become the backbenchers, the, the conscience of the party. It didn't work out because w once they got into Parliament, everybody wanted to be a minister. And so they brought some pressure on him so that they would all become ministers. So nobody really wants to learn about politics. They just want to jump in and get their hand and they all start moving and looking at themselves. We are saying that within the constituencies, we have come together. I came together with a good group from Parham the other day to stop a lady from taking up the last space, the last water space up at, uh, up at the fisheries area. When we saw what was happening there, we had to do something. Personally, I went to see Mr. Michael first time I went to his yard. And I had to be rapping and waiting, and the mother was speaking to me the way she wanted. I had to find blue waters to get him. Eventually, after weeks of fighting and struggling, we found him and we told him what was happening, what we had already done, going to DCA, going to agriculture and everything. Then we got a meeting. He came to the meeting, he spoke, and then he left because he had something else to do. But he didn't even know the outcome of that meeting. But we fought and we got her to take down those walls and stopped her from building something on the last little piece of space we have. Yeah. We did it as a people. And that's what I want to see happen. Fidges Creek has a group. Um, Vernon's had another group. If these groups can come together, and nobody can unite them but me. They cannot be united on the ALP, they can't be united on the UPP. The only person I can get them to come together is me, because the people know me. They have come to me about different things. What can you do for our young people? I say to them, if you give me the authority, I can. But some people are saying, oh, she can't do anything alone. She has to form government. It's a myth. It's a myth. We can do a lot. We have done a lot. But we must be realistic. We come together as a people yes. and we work. All right, let me ask Mr. Beerbird the third. What would you do? What would be your first order of business if you were to what win in um, St. John's Rural South? First order of business, the first thing that we're going to do, and that is win, lose, or draw at the next general election in St. John's Rural South, is build our community center. The plans were approved by DCA last year, first week in February. It is something that needs to be done for that constituency. As we started off by saying, there is no community center, no health center, no hurricane shelter, no fire station, no police station in St. John's Rural South. And to add, to rub the salt into the room, even Otters Comprehensive, the school, has never been in St. John's Rural South or Otters. So even the name of Otters has been used in another constituency at a secondary school. When you look at St. John's Rural South, it's 17 constituencies in Antigua and Barbuda, and there are 16 constituencies on top of St. John's Rural South. It's the most neglected constituency in Antigua and Barbuda. We plan the True Labour Party, um, the, my, my mother, Weber Jr.'s widow, and his 10 children. We plan to build a community center on Rose Street. It was a parcel of land, and it's historical because it, it's one of the old original union halls that predates party politics because all the politicians came out of the political action committee of the ATNLU. So that part of that land is in the family. We got the plans approved to build a community shelter. The structure should be able to hold 150 to 200 people on the ground floor. 
In addition to that, we want to get it approved by NODS to double as a hurricane shelter. Golden Grove Primary School is a death trap. I do not advise anybody to go there in a Category 4 or 5 hurricane. God willing, everything you goes. You mean as a shelter? As a shelter, yes, yes. And as not a shelter. as a school, yeah, but in good weather. In good weather. In good weather. But what I'm saying is that the plan was to at least get the ground floor up before the election. But then world boss or whatever they, they call him started and said he's going to call a snap election. But the plans are there, and that is what my main concern is to provide in some sort of shelter and refuge for the people of St. John's Rural South. Win, lose, or draw. It's not a matter of where you bang off at the polls and say, I'm bill or anything like that. It will be built. That is where we will be organizing and helping the people of Antigua and Barbuda as a true Labour Party, as concerned candidates, representatives, Antiguans and Barbudans to help other people. All right. Uh, let me give me very quickly both of you in terms of what's your canvassing on the ground showing. How realistic are your chances of winning your respective seats, starting with you, Mrs. Warren Samuel? Well, if people vote their conscience, I will win. If people vote because of fear, then I will not win. And I'm asking people to vote for themselves because that is what you're doing. Do not follow the people who say to you, because I cannot form government, I can do nothing. Because government has been formed and nothing has been done. So Excellent. I encourage them to do so. Excellent. Mr. Berber, third. I'm a lawyer by profession, called above England and Wales in 2000. I've been practicing in Antigua for over 70 years. If you want a legislator who knows the law, I'm the person. In addition to that, I have a degree in government and politics from St. John's University, 1993. I think I'm the only candidate who actually went to school and trained formally to be a politician. So I am qualified. Of the but 53? Then, only, of the, only of the 53 who have been nominated? Yes. Next. I'm the only one that actually went to school to learn how to do the job. Right? But you know what I'm going up against? Ham and Turkey. And in addition to that, the party atmosphere of the Antigua Labour Party. So my chances are ebbing. It's, it's in, the, in the mix right now. That Ham and Turkey right now is a hell of an op opponent. I'm not even looking at the ALP candidate or the UPP candidate. I'm looking at, ha I'm competing with Hammond Turkey right now. Wow. <laughs> talking about things that are being given away by the parties? Of course, man. They had the Christmas um, ham and turkey, but then after Christmas um, ham and turkey, I thought they had some surplus all now so, but no, they went and got new containers of ham and turkey. So much ham and turkey containers out there that they lost one or two of the, the, the containers. So there may be some tainted um, turkey out there. So be careful. If I'm able to track it down, I will let the constituents know not to eat from that batch. But it's a hell of a component. It's a hell of a opponent facing ham and turkey. All right. So, so you think your chances are... It's good, but I have to go beat out that ham and turkey right now. Not even the candidates. It's the ham and turkey I'm competing. <laughs> Weber the third, uh, talking with us in a very frank way. Thanks very much. And Charlene Warner Samuel. Charlene Warner Samuel is the leader of the Antigua Barbuda True Labour Party. Weber the third is the chairman of the party. <laughs> Both are saying to the people, vote your conscience. They're saying, don't uh, follow the argument that because we are only two candidates and we can't form the government, in other words, we don't have the numbers to form a government, still vote for us because. We're going to give you good representation. They think that good representation has been lacking in their respective constituencies. Uh, that is, uh, Charlene Warner Samuel going for St. Peter and Mr. Weber III going for St. John's Rural South. When we come back, much more discussions here on Antigua Barbuda today. We're giving a voice to all sides in this debate. In other words, journalism, the media is the oxygen of democracy, and we're ensuring that everybody gets a chance to get their message out. When we come back, much more discussions. You're watching Antigua Barbuda today. Don't go away.